Welcome back. We are now joined by Brittany Hiller of Brittany Hiller Yoga. Brittany, how are you? I'm good. How good. are you, Zakia? Good. Thank you. So I am so pleased to have you here on this very first episode. We have been counting down the months, and you have just stuck with me from beginning. Yeah. And uh, I'm very excited to have you. I'm honored to have you as my first guest here. Thank you. Thank I'm you. excited to be here. I Good. appreciate the honor of being the first one on your awesome <laughs> tour. Well, let's talk a little bit. Well, first of all, for those that do not know Brittany, Brittany, again, is the owner of Brittany Hiller Yoga. Um, Brittany is a wellness practitioner who specializes in yoga, massage, and children's yoga therapy. She is the author of the children's book, The Little Laughing Yogini, which I absolutely love. If you don't know what laughter yoga is, you absolutely have to try it out with Brittany. It's hilarious. <laughs> Yeah. Literally. <laughs> um, the Little Laughing Yogini is a short story, an inspiring story of a child who teaching children to follow their heart. Um, she's the owner of Brittany Hiller Yoga, which we said, and she's the creator of Little Yogini Play Shops, a program developed to bring yoga to elementary schools. And again, welcome, Brittany. So now that we've got the formalities out the way, <laughs> um, Brittany, again, I will share my experience with uh, having Brittany here on the show and what inspired me to have her here is Brittany and I have known each other for about five years mm -hmm. in um, business as associates and as friends. And what really shocked me about Brittany is we met one morning to have breakfast and I was actually talking to Brittany about this show. And I was just sharing my passion and my vision for the show with Brittany and we just got to talking and literally over breakfast, she drops this bombshell on me and <laughs> shares her story, which again is completely what Inspired is about. You think you know, a, just when you think you know a person yeah. and then you find out, I didn't know that. Right. <laughs> and um, so I literally got chills when Brittany shared her story with me and I said, you know what, I want you to be on the first episode. So just to, you know, Brittany and I are always all laughter, all smiles. And that's what also got my attention with Brittany is because, again, in knowing her for five years, I've never seen her crack a frown. I've never seen her throw anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I have never seen her just not in a good mood with this yeah. gorgeous smile. Never, ever, ever. And so just to hear her story really touched me. And so we want to go into that story. Um, Brittany is a very selfless, very giving individual, as you can see through her play shops and what she's done. And just to hear her story is very empowering and touching. And um, again, I'm honored. So I just you know, would like for you to share with me and share with viewers your story Certainly. of overcoming and get into the place that you are now. Certainly. Well, it began in my early 20s. Um, you know, we, we have these times in our life where we do things and uh, we learn from them. Well, my situation ended up being um, I was on a date with a friend and it turned out um, unfortunate events occurred and from that situation I became pregnant. And this pregnancy, um, I went two months completely unaware, unknowing and just in doubt. And then once the third month rolled around, it realized, I realized really quickly, okay, I'm pregnant. Um, there's something happening here, but I was completely detached from my body to the point that I, um, I didn't, I didn't go about my life as if I was pregnant, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. I completely shut down from the ability to even think that this was happening to me. Um, and through that detachment though, created this entire world within me where I was just going about my day normal life, like God's gonna take care of this, God's gonna take care of this, there's nothing going on here, this isn't happening to me, um, this never happened to me. And what happened eventually is my belly kept growing and the detachment kept occurring. Nobody at my work knew, no, nobody in my family knew until I was seven months pregnant and I finally came out to my sister and I was just like, I, I don't know what to do. I had called an abortion clinic because I didn't know, um, I was like, maybe I'll do that. I had friends who had had, had that in their life. and. And they referred me to a place, and I called them, and they said, um, we're sorry, but you're too far along. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, God, through my 
beautiful aspects of church and learning through Life Teen, I, I realized that was not what I wanted to do. Um, I did not want to do uh, a partial birth. And so I was like, my next step is adoption. I mean, she's, this baby's got to come out of me somehow, in some way. And so when I had discussed this with my sister, she gracio graciously, I would say, immediately said, okay, let's look at adoption agencies. She became my rock for me. And then um, my boyfriend at the time, unbeknownst to him, became my rock as well. And when I finally came out, because I was, I was coming out to everyone, to my family and to my boyfriend, they said, you know, they were, they just held me in their arms and they accepted me. And that was so loving and and gracious of him especially because he could have easily said I don't want anything to do with this right. goodbye for my life but he grasped my belly and was just like there's a baby in there like okay what do we do now what's our next step he and literally was Joseph to your Mary yeah Can you imagine what Joseph oh had to go through you're right yeah. <gasps> woo crazy just gave me truth bumps but <laughs> but so from that experience um I turned to adoption and adoption was my next best thing and um and so immediately after seven months, again, I've never been to the hospital. I didn't see anybody. Um, I didn't go through anything with this pregnancy. It was literally just, this is God happening. Yeah. Let's see what happens. And um, so seven months going into the, um, going to the doctor and getting everything that needed. It was all really, really quick. Um, found a beautiful family that I could gift her to and I was so excited for. And... Um, and they told me, you know, these are what these are the steps. We've done this already three times. This is what you need to receive as a birth mother. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't receiving that, trying to go through a closed adoption. So then when I went through open adoption, it was much more of a giving aspect. It was much more of a celebratory experience. Right. And I had my friends there when I had the baby. Um, and it was a, a joyous and really, again, a celebratory experience that I learned in that experience that through the hardship of the way that all, all of this was happening, that's nine months of detachment from right. my physical body and from my experience and thinking, you know, this can't be happening to me, this can't be happening to me. But yet through all of that, I learned that it was just so such a powerful experience to have this child, to gift this child, to a family who was well deserving and so loving and so wanting of something that I was like, I was not ready for in my right, life, just right. not ready for it. Well, and I think it's beautiful that you keep referring to the child as a gift. You know, the Bible tells us that children are a gift from God. And, you know, you mentioned unfortunate circumstances and, you know, to viewers that don't know, it was an assault. and. It was an unfortunate circumstance, but again, just listening to you refer to the child as a gift, it's absolutely biblical. A lot of times we think that, you know, and I would say rightfully so, you would have felt justified in your thinking that, okay, this is not what I planned, this is not how a child should, you know, being detached and not feeling like this is, but you chose life. And so I think that speaks mounds to your faith. I think it speaks mounds to um, just honoring the gift and children that God says they are. And you were able to be a blessing to another family. Mm -hmm. And I think that just speaks so beautifully of your testimony. Um, while you were going through this, you said, you know, detached for you know, an individual that may have experienced or may be going through the same thing, you know, what advice would you offer them? Could you share with us a little more about that and how, you know, I think it's amazing. And, and, and to the viewers, the boyfriend at the time, who was not the, the yeah. perpetrator, right, exactly. to clarify that, yes. um, is now your husband, yes. which is phenomenal, yes. um, you know, that he stood by your side and went through this and endured it with you. Um, but for viewers that are watching, you know, just going through that, you know, and again, to see how you are and to the smile and the joy and the laughter. I'm telling you, I about dropped my spoon when you started talking to me because <laughs> yeah. I never knew. Right. Um, how do they get to this place? How do they find their peace? Mm, that's a great question. I found mine purposely through 
through the people around me, through my friends, through my family, uh, to the support. And if you feel that you don't have that support, my advice to you would be find that support. There are many advocacies. There are many, um, I mean, Hope Haven. There's just so many places that you can go to f to find support. Right. And if it's not in your family, if you, if you feel you don't have that, I would definitely turn to your friends, turn to some sort of support system because ultimately I've learned it's not ourselves that build ourselves up it's other people in our life that build ourselves up and we can't do it alone as much as we wish we could yeah. and that really was what was the turning point for me was the the amount of people that showed up for me and that's in that really hard time yes. and was like we're here for you Brittany um we know that this happened but we love you unconditionally and truly and we want to support you and we want to see you happy. We want to see you excel. Yes. And through that, especially with my husband, he was he is that person in my life. He always says, I support you. Whatever you do, no matter how crazy the idea is, I support <laughs> you and I and I love you and, and let's see where it goes. Yeah. And so yeah. Which is great. A support system is something that so many people that we all need, mm -hmm. but so many of us do not have. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes in life, we find that when we are at the lowest points and the lowest moments of our lives, that is when you want to quit, give up, and give in. And so, um, again, it just speaks beautifully of who you are. Um, it lines up perfectly with being here because this is what we want to do. These are the lives we want to reach, the lives we want to touch. And um, if you could sum up, if you had one, it doesn't have to be one, right. but that inspiring thing to viewers in your story or to share with them, what would that be? Inspiring thing in my story. Honestly, self-love, mm -hmm. huge self-love, um, because through that whole entire experience, I had the opportunity that I could have just been completely letting myself down, letting myself go and saying, like, how dare you? You set yourself up for this. You did this to yourself, you know. Very good point. You're giving up something. Other people are looking at you and saying, how dare she give up her child? Mm -hmm. And in my mind, it wasn't my child. It was somebody else's child. Right. And so to be able to have that real strong love for myself and understanding that I'm here for a reason and I'm here to help inspire others, and through my story, I'm going to do just that. And absolutely, so, yeah. absolutely. Well, one of my favorite, I wouldn't even necessarily call it a phrase, but that just inner knowing is there is purpose in the pain. Mm -hmm. You, from your pain, you have drawn so much purpose. You're able to reach and teach so many lives. And I think as overcomers and survivors, we can relate to this, that it doesn't, it was asked offset, you know, do I need to get tissue? Am I going to cry? And right. I thought, you know, Brittany and I are probably going to be, you know, <laughs> laugh. because when it becomes your purpose, it's no longer about you. Exactly. It, again, self-love is actually selflessness. Yeah. So thank you, Brittany. We really appreciate you being on the show. Thank I'm you, just excited yeah. for all you're doing. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode. We look forward to many more. Thank you. And we will see you soon.